Well, the Trainshed Redevelopment Project is quite remarkable. Located in the heart of one of Sydney's major growth areas, it's destined to become a community hub in the future. This is a perfect example where architecture can actually change the social interaction of a once abandoned space. It is always a gamble keeping an old building warts and all, but here in Sydney it is really paid off. Let me show you this, what we got from okay. day one. Wow, when, when we look at this, it's a, like, what a challenge. But at the same time, what an inspiration place we could start from. What a beautiful uh, environment. What a robust material, the colours. What an outrageous colors. environment. Yes. <laughs> the bones of it, I can see that you've actually, um, oh, you've kept them. You've kept the skylights, you've kept the the way the roof works, the way the light falls in. We identify early on the brickwork of the building is to preserve as much as possible. The graffiti, preserve as much as possible. It's actually almost an, a perfect place to put this kind of marketplace because of the scale of what you've got. The quality of the material we think is the last 100 years I think we should embrace the palette, the rich tapestry of the surrounding, which is forming the vision for the Harrow Park. Sometimes with projects like this, there's so much pressure to demolish the old and actually start again. Why'd you keep it? Oh, for us, this is a challenge, and we love challenge. And as architect, we want to preserve and protect what is there and then create something new for the community. I really like the flavour of this internal space here. It's flexible, your furniture's on wheels. I think your design strategy really works. There's a really great sense of control in an area where there's such a diverse offer from different retailers. And I notice that there's much more in here than food and those sorts of things. There's some community services embedded in it. Yeah, we got a community centre and also we got a gym. People want to active and then the health food shop and also the food and these uh, produce at the core of the tramshed. And a supermarket. Supermarket. And, and I, I understand that this is designed as the heart of a very dense new urban residential development. It's the centre of our vision, where we want to create something quite unique for the, the Harrow Park and also for the community. So all of the new residents of this area will use this place. They'll use it for their supermarket shopping, they'll yeah. use it for their gym. A meeting um, place. A so meeting. it was truly a live, work and place. In many ways, we're lucky this building was still standing when the designers came to it, having been shut up for so many decades. And luckier still that they took the hard road of reinvention rather than knocking it down. Sometimes architecture can be a little like food. Some of its tastiest creations are slow cooked. Peter is savouring this stunning Sydney home behind me that spent a long time on the boil, blending simplistic sophistication with high-tech engineering. This is just an incredible testament to concrete architecture. It's just beautifully crafted from the environment and the rocks that are the backdrop. Construction is designed to the contours of the land and is a very warm and pleasing design. The warmth of the internals, that's been another great job that has been done by collaboration between client and designers. This home was six years in design and another six years in construction, but it was well worth the wait. Gerard, it's a very dramatic building, but it's really lovely the way it sits in the landscape. It's, uh, this tree is really the centre of it all. Um, uh, literally and figuratively, as it were, the, the tree um, was something that the clients really were interested in retaining and gathering around on site. And we said, well, why don't we literally gather the building around the tree? So it's always quite funny when you bring people here because they'll see photos of the house and see this soaring concrete cantilever. Um, and then you turn up and you go, oh, it's actually quite recessive in the landscape, isn't it? And I think to us that was very important, that if we were going to really be part of the landscape, 
there's something about putting rectangular floor slabs and walls in which mean you're building no matter what you do. So here, the idea is everything is slightly twisting, slightly turning, slightly rolling. So I think you really generally do have a sense that you are just in the site. You're definitely not at any point opening a door and going into a house. Um, it's, it's part of the site. We've always felt for the work that we do that corridors are lost space and with this house the opportunity to use the corridor as a, as a device or a method for connecting you back to the landscape was really important. The corridor that sits to the front of the house is orienting you to the landscape and it's bent around this beautiful scribbly gum in front of us. In, in a way it's got a very sheltering quality and it's almost like you're in a, a rock shelf. Yeah, exactly. And so the timber that we've woven into the spaces is, is uh, a way of holding people in an intimate moment. So it allows us to handshake between the big sculptural um, qualities of the concrete and then bring you back into a more intimate um, way of living. It really has a cave-like quality, like it scoops out, like, yeah. it's, like it's part of a natural formation. Absolutely, and, and that's the, the sculptural quality of the concrete. It was really important, that's where um, Pascal Gomes McNabbs from Melbourne was an amazing collaborator on this from the uh, interior design point of view, where she became a part of our practice um, for the period of this project to deliver all the beautiful qualities um, that uh, Fiona, the client, was looking for um, in terms of an intimate living experience. Yeah, wow, this is a real bathroom. Absolutely. This is one of the most opulent moments in the house and it's an amazing way to start your day. And we're getting into this very deep bath. Yes, well this, is, um, this was always a, um, a request for the client was to have a onsen, Japanese onsen uh, bath. And it gave us that beautiful moment um, to connect as well to the Australian landscape uh, through this big uh, pivot window. Obviously, it was a very long project. In many respects, I think it was a positive experience to have that time because it gives you the ability to problem solve things as you go and you actually do get a better result because it's not rushed. As well as your relationship with the architect, you also brought on an interior designer. With Pascal coming on board, she uh, took it in a different direction which created more intimacy within the structure. Uh, Chris and Gerard Terroir, they worked extremely well together and um, I think that's why we've got this fantastic result. Given time, this house will change again because it's now all about the gardens and it fitting into the landscape with the greenery around it. I think if you come back in five years, you'll see a completely different transformation here. It's very easy to build a concrete bunker but with skill and artistry, concrete can be beautiful. The brilliant thing about this design is the way the home wraps around this magnificent gum tree. It really feels like living in nature. 